I'm Wendy, and I'm here to read you a story called Daisy Comes Home by Jan Brett. I picked it because my family keeps chickens, and this is a story about a chicken named Daisy. We just got six new chickens this week, and maybe I should name one of them Daisy. So here's the story, Daisy Comes Home by Jan Brett. Look over the garden wall, and you will see the six happiest hens in China. They live in May May's sandy yard by the Lee River, where they lay brown eggs every day for Mei Mei to sell at the market. But it was not always this way. Here are the six hens. Once upon a time, the smallest hen, the one Mei Mei calls Daisy, was picked on by all the others. This is hard to imagine because Mei Mei was known far and wide for her happy hens. She gave them treats, she put fresh hay in their nests. She gave them baths when they fell in black mud. And when she called, coo, 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 all the hens would run to her as fast as their legs could carry them. Here are the hens running as fast as their legs could carry them. Even Mamie's egg baskets were painted with big red characters that read, happy hens. And she tried to make it so. Here is the basket with the red lettering that means happy hens in Chinese. But every night when it was time to roost in the hen house, the other hens picked on Daisy. They fluffed up their feathers and crowded her off the perch. They jostled her until peck, one or the other pushed her and thump, off she fell. Then the hens tucked their heads into their feathers and went to sleep while poor little Daisy was stuck below on the damp mud floor, shivering and cold until morning. So here you can see Mamie, the girl, sleeping in her bed and you can see the hens pushing Daisy off. And then you can see here, wait for it, Daisy, I mean, Daisy is sleeping on the floor. One day, it rained all day and the hens stayed inside. When it got dark, they flew up to their perch, except for Daisy. She had had enough of pushy hens and cold, damp floors. She went outside to find a place to spend the night. Down on the riverbank, she spied one of the market baskets. She snuggled in and fluffed up her feathers to stay warm. Daisy was sleeping and did not see the river creeping up the bank from all the rain. And when the water reached her happy hen's basket, she didn't feel it float out onto the river. So here she is in her happy hen's basket, floating down the river and she's still sleeping. But when the basket started tipping and bobbing, Daisy woke up. She peeked out and saw a watery world all around her. The sandy yard, the garden wall, and Maymay's farmhouse looked smaller and smaller as the current carried her down the river. Here she is going down the river and you can see that the farm is far away down the river. She's going down, down, down. Finally, the basket bumped against a stone jetty where a houseboat was tied up. Scratch, scratch, scraped the basket as the river waves pushed it against the sharp rocks. A dog was sitting up on the deck of the houseboat. When he saw the plump hen bobbing in the basket, he barked and scrambled toward her. Whoa! Daisy squawked and packed and beat the air with her wings. It was enough to tip the basket off the rocks and she floated away just in time. Here is the dog barking at her and she's flapping her wings. Morning broke over the Gui Mountains as the basket drifted along the river. Branches brushed against it. Fish swam silently by and birds flew overhead. Suddenly Daisy felt a thump. Daisy looked up and saw two big horns and a pair of surprised eyes looking down at her. Here is the picture of the surprised eyes. Maybe you can figure out what it was she bumped into. The basket had drifted into the legs of a great big water buffalo taking a morning drink. The buffalo snorted loudly, scaring Daisy. She flew forward and nipped his furry muzzle, that's his nose, and flapped and flapped her wings. Daisy scared the water buffalo. He turned and galloped up the bank, scattering the ducks as he ran. His splashes made waves that carried the basket back into the middle of the river. So here's Daisy right after she nipped his muzzle or his nose. 
And there he is scrambling up the bank. And can you see the ducks that are running out of its way? But luckily, she was safely back into the middle of the river. Daisy traveled along all day until her basket was hooked by the roots of a banyan tree where a troop of red-tailed monkeys lived. The curious monkeys eyed Daisy and climbed down for a closer look. Daisy froze as one monkey crept up to the basket and reached in. Daisy flapped and pecked and nipped and squawked. The startled monkey pushed the basket away. It broke loose from the tree and floated on down the river. Daisy wondered what would happen next. And here you can see the monkeys and Daisy giving them enough of a scare that they let her go. Up ahead, Daisy saw a fisherman with cormorants, that's a kind of bird, diving all around his bamboo boat. They were catching fish and taking them to him for a reward. The fisherman felt a soft bump behind him. Thinking it was another cormorant, he reached back and grabbed. How surprised he was that he was holding a hen instead of a cormorant. Finders keepers, he exclaimed. Little fish, big fish, silver fish, white fish, that's what I sell at the market, but today I will have this tender young chicken. He put a net over the basket and headed to shore with poor Daisy inside. So here you can see the man using these fisher birds to catch fish for him. But if you look up in the corner, you can see that May May is looking for Daisy back at home. At home, Mamie had been looking all day and all night for her little Daisy. She wasn't in the hen house. She wasn't behind the farmhouse. She couldn't fly over the wall. Where is she? Mamie wondered, worried all the time about what had happened to Daisy. Finally, she knew she just had to go to the market. With a sad feeling, she packed her eggs in their baskets and started on her way. As the baskets swung back and forth, the red characters on the sides of her baskets made Mamie feel sadder and sadder. Happy hens, she said. What about my Daisy? Where can she be? So here we see Mamie with her other hens wondering where could Daisy be? But she has to go to the market. At the market, Mamie found a place and arranged the eggs in clean, sweet smelling straw. All morning shoppers brought, bought her fresh brown eggs but she couldn't stop thinking about her little lost hen. Mamie heard a voice calling to her. It was her friend Jean yelling from the back of a bike cart. A fisherman has happy hen's basket, he shouted. What, she called, not understanding what he was saying. A happy hen's basket, he repeated. You'd better hurry because he's showing off what's inside. It's Daisy, Mamie shouted. So here is Mamie at her place at the market. See all the busy people shopping and some more people shopping. Somebody's buying cabbages. Maymay raced to where the fish were sold. And there was Daisy, beautiful and plump in her basket, surrounded by a crowd, all wanting to buy her. That's my hen, she cried to the fisherman. But his face was like stone. She pointed to the red characters on the basket. Happy hens, she said. The fisherman crossed his arms. Finders keepers. He growled and turned away to sell Daisy. Mamie was about to leave, but her eyes rested on those characters, happy hens. All she could think about was Daisy in a cooking pot. She squeezed her eyes shut and clenched her fists. She had to do something. Here she is running up to see if she can get her back. Mamie had an idea. She called at the top of her voice. And when Daisy heard that call, she answered it the way she had every day of her life. She rose up and threw herself against the basket, tipping it over. She ran toward her friend Mamie as fast as her legs could go. Daisy flew onto Mamie's shoulder and off they went, running back to get Mamie's baskets and go home. And here you see Daisy running. The fisherman ran after them, furious. Stop, he yelled at Maymay. That's my hen. Finders keepers, Maymay called over her shoulder. 
and with Daisy clinging to her, she ran and did not stop until they were safely home. Here she is running with her Daisy with her. Oh dear. That night, as the sun went down, Daisy took a place on the roost. When one of the big hens fluffed up her wings and spread out, expecting Daisy to fall off onto the perch and onto the floor like always, Daisy flapped her wings. I learned that from a boat dog, she chuckled. Another hen tried to tip her off. She pushed right back. I scared a water buffalo like that, she squawked. Quack. Another hen jostled her. Quack, 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 quack. Daisy kept her place on the perch and beat the air with her wings. She remembered the monkey and she pecked and flapped all over again. That was when the hens gave Daisy a place of her own. And here you see everybody trying to push her off and her not letting them push her off inside their little hen house. The lap, lap, lap of the river made a peaceful nighttime song. No bumping, no jostling, no fussing around. Just six happy hens, their heads tucked into their feathers, high and warm and safe all together. And here they are ready to say good night. <laughs>